how many times do you think you could say John like fast, fast, fast until you start not saying the name properly? The Premier League season is over, and so that means we have to choose a team of the season. Now, I am JJ Bull. This is... John McKenzie. The correct. And uh, if we chose the real team of the season, clearly it would just be Manchester City. And so in th what we thought we'd do instead is pick a team of the season in the Premier League, but we can only choose a maximum of two players from one team. On the pitch at any one time. We do have some subs. Yes, we have subs also. And uh, I have made errors, thus <laughs> we will see what's going on anyway. In front of you, you will see our two teams. Mine is on the left. It's very shiny. You may have noticed that I've put mine into the formation of the season, which is Manchester City's 3-2-2-3. Three, two, two, three. And that's the formation of the season. Yes. I can also go into this formation. But John, Master of Tactics, has opted <laughs> for a 4-4-2. Four, four, <laughs> Which becomes a situational 3-5-2 in well, possession. Let's go through yours and explain why you've gone for that shape in particular and the players that go in it. Okay, so the real reason why I've gone for a front two mm -hmm. is because I wanted to get Kane and Haaland into the same team. Yes, I also did that. Mm -hmm. But you've put Kane as a... As an eight, I see. Yeah, well, he always goes deep. Okay, so you're having sort of dropping as a... And then imagine having that and Holland up front as part of your little... I mean, I can imagine it because I've got that in my team. Oh, yeah, um, the 442. But yeah, so I wanted to start off with a 442 system, but then I also didn't want to go with a back three system because it means that you have to find wing backs rather than full backs. So that meant that I had to have a back four and a front two, and that only really leaves a 442. But you're still thinking in the past. I don't have any wing backs. Look at this. It's true, and I do have problems if I want to move situationally to a back three because I do have two fullbacks. I, can, I guess I could rotate round and use Trippier as a flying wing back, as in as in the past. But I feel as though I've regressed tactically mm. back to the, the the early 2000s. Here. One of the surprises of the season was that Trippier can fly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, made him very useful on the wing. That's the next development, I think, of of fullbacks. Flying players. We well, have two D, don't we? Everyone runs on the pitch. But what about if you made it three D and you could go? Up. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, let's go in order so it helps other people edit this together. So, goalkeeper, you have gone with David Rea. Why? Well, I did consider Alisson, which is the, the goalkeeper that you've gone for. Alisson's obviously had a really impressive season. Um, according to FB Ref, he's, he's saved about 10 goals worth of 10.1, yeah. So yeah. that's why I went for Alisson, is because the statistics told me that he has saved far more goals than any other Goalkeeper should be expected to so far in the league, it's called the FB ref. Before I had spotted that, I had Nick Pope in because I mm. thought he did really well for Newcastle. But his his number isn't that high, you see, on the saving these goals. It's, it's he's only 0.3 above what you may be expecting to be in the same metric as Allison. But he does have loads and loads of um, sweeper, keeper, I think it's keeper sweepings is the metric on Opta. And he's like one of the highest for that in the league. Comes out and cleans things up. Yeah, and so uh, Alisson, and Alisson, I think, has had a lot of chance to do a lot of saving this season because Liverpool haven't been great defensively, uh, even if they have maybe solided things up more recently. But I actually went with, with David Raya because I feel as though he's probably the goalkeeper who has increased in profile the most this season. And he's done so playing for um, one of the best performing defensive sides as well. Um, but yeah, again, it's not just about the, the defensive elements of goalkeeping. I think he's... Actually, really, really impressive um, uh, ball playing uh, goalkeeper as well, um, and we've had the chance to watch him a couple of times in in person, and it's I think really impressive when you you see what it is that he can do. He's very good with the ball at his mm. feet. All right, let's go on to centre backs. Now, you obviously love John Stones. John did a very good video on John Stones on TFO IRL. You can watch that if you're new to the channel or you've not watched it yet. Yeah, and I, I sort of forced myself into having to pick John Stones. Um, because I said that he there's an outside chance that he should be the low key player of the season in the Premier League, and the argument is that actually he has allowed Manchester City to do the things that that you're doing tactically on on, on the pitch, right? Yes, Which is, yes. You have the option of having the the centre back who can push forward in in possession. Into That's that why midfield. Rice is mostly in. Like I don't even know really if Rice has been one of the players of the season, but he is very good, and I when I have seen him, he's amazing. Mm. So therefore, that's why I put him in this little slot here. Yeah. John Stones, it was really hard not to get him in my team because obviously you only get two from Man City, right? So that's really difficult. Yeah. You've got to have the monster boy. You can't not have him. And then I love Rodri. I think he's one of the most important players of the entire season. Maybe player of the season if it wasn't mm. obviously Holland or Saka. Or the yeah, and I'm a huge Rodri fan as well. I guess I, I felt with, with my midfield that because I got Bruno Guimaraes in, I felt as though 
he's you know he's just just below uh, Rodri in terms of playing playing that sort of role. Um, so that gave me the freedom to be able to have Holland and and Stones in. But the idea with Stones, I suppose, is that if I needed, I'm, I'm never the biggest fan of like a two man midfield. Although I think this is two man midfield would actually work fine. Uh, but it gives you the option again of of you just being able to push Stones. Uh, forward into that into that midfield and do this the same sort of thing that you're doing here, um, uh, allowing Erdogan to get to get forward as well in possession. Um, so yeah, I see Kane is attacking the space around Kieran Trippier in a, in quite a nervy way. Yeah, I mean yeah, but what about this? Hey, what about this? You've left a huge space in defence. He's offside. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put him back. Equally, equally, like in a, in a defensive transition, you would you would have him dropping out here as well. Um, yeah. The problem, I think, that with this sort of tactical approach is that by pushing stones up, you're then forming this back three, this situational back three, like you have, yeah. and you have done it quite nicely because you've got Shaw and Saliba in it who can both play as outside centre backs. Whereas yeah. with Kieran Trippier, one, I'm less convinced that he would be able to play like an outside centre back role. The other thing is, is that in possession, you want Kieran Trippier to be here yes. rather than here. So. Um, the, the 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 other option I suppose would be to actually play Stones as a um, as an outside centre back here and then and then flip things around somehow. I mean I've not got De Bruyne in, who I think is well worth being in this team. I've got him on my bench. So if I were to play Stones as an outside player, um, I'd probably want to try and bring in De Bruyne, maybe play him instead of Saka. But then I've got to get rid of Holland, and I probably don't want to do that either. So remember, there are this, is not, this is not a real team. Remember, this is the thing. But let, tell me, tell me why. So Stones, particularly, I think you said that he basically won the league for Man City with fixing Pep's system. Yeah, the big thing that's happened with with Manchester City is is that this season they've had to solve a couple of problems. One of them was bringing in Holland and changing the system that they were playing. So last season they were playing usually a four two four shape in possession with with sort of two false ish nines in the in the forward slots, which is you know something that he's done elsewhere. And you've got a video actually coming out on the tactical development of it's already out. It's already out. Yeah. Uh, on on the de tactical development of. Of Guardiola, and he's he's used these sort of two false false uh, nine positions before. Um, bringing in Holland changes the, the dynamic of the front line, uh, and then the other problem that they had to solve was the the fact that Cancelo left midway through the season. Yes, they you've been using Cancelo and Zinchenko the season before as inverting fullbacks, and once you get rid of those two players, actually the Manchester City squad doesn't have a huge amount of scope for um, inverting. Fullback. So what we actually saw was originally we saw Rico Lewis, uh, even Bernardo Silva being used as centre midfielders who were going to drop. You're doing your whole video again for me. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was answering the question, but, yeah. but um, and you, you have them as centre midfielders and they drop out um, into wide areas. But actually, the, the more obvious thing to do is have a centre back who can actually play in midfield, use him in possession in the middle, and then and then drop out. And I think that solves a huge amount of problems. For it's exactly what I'm trying to do with Declan Rice on the same side. I'm basically copying the John Stones thing, or rather than being, yeah, like you see, over here and coming inside, he just goes back like that. So that's my theory, because Rice was the centre-back once. Martinez, because he's good with the... What did he press you with, particularly? Yeah, I, th I think Martinez was... I suppose you put him in. Yeah, well, uh, there was a lot of narrative, obviously, at the beginning of the season about them bringing in Martinez and, and people expecting him to be not good enough for the Premier League. And I think he was quite clearly comfortable in, in the yeah. Premier League. Really, really good build-up player, obviously. Um, and so I've included him um, on, on the back of that. I've also put in Levi Colwell as well for yes, good Brighton. Save. Because I thought, again, this team is going to be building out from the back um, and Brighton's build-up has been incredible, obviously, under Roberto De Zerbi. So I thought it, was, it would be nice to have a, just a hat tip to them by having Colwell in the team as well. And I've got Shaw in as not even a fullback. I have him as a proper centre-back. I think he's been, he was amazing this season, right? Playing that proper role often in a two as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, has really come on. Like he's, he looks like a really good footballer. And when, remember when Mourinho was calling him out for not having a football brain? Clearly, does. Yeah, and you I can't think do that without it. Perfect for this sort of position, right? Sitting somewhere between like a centre back and a, and a full back yeah, as well. Yeah, and paying honouring the formation of the season. I think that's very important. Yeah. No one does that formation of the season. No, we're the, we're the first idea. ones to do that. You're the first one. I didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. You just I, didn't, I invented a new one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that probably doesn't work. All right. So that's our centre back. So I'll tell you what I've got the rest of my team. Right. So you, obviously Martinez Stones makes sense. Uh, Sven Botman is part of uh, the joint, or might be the best. This is filmed before the last game of the season. But Newcastle had the best defensive record, the best defensive numbers all season long. It, it coincided with him joining the club. Sure enough, it was when when Burn uh, Botman. 
uh, Cher. Cher and Trippier are playing. They don't concede many, especially with Pope behind them. But when Botman misses especially, you can see the real, it, re it really changes it up. Like the cells coming in to replace, uh, to play next to Cher, it's just not the same. So Botman comes in just because of that, the kind of defensive record and to respect Newcastle's defensive record. To explain Shaw, Saliba, Arsenal may very well have gone on and pushed City if they hadn't lost him. The numbers were completely different before he got injured until after. In fact, John, you spotted that before it happened, right? And started saying the numbers were bad for Arsenal. Yeah, there was definitely some some issues showing up, particularly when it came to set piece defending, uh, and it, and in the end, I think that coupled with uh, maybe the psychological pressure of leading against a Man City team who were rapidly catching them up. Um, the real team of the season. Mm. Yes, I've got Saliba on the bench as well, um, and oh, arguably, yeah. like if I if I brought on brought off Stones, brought on Saliba, I can then use De Bruyne somewhere. Um, which yeah probably probably solves a lot of the well, issues. Well, that's a good that's a good one to have, right? So, see, he did have that. Let's get rid of stones. I mean, you can't get rid of stones. You love him, but put him here. <laughs> and De Bruyne, maybe we would replace Gimenez uh, or I, no, I think I'd I'd probably even think about using De Bruyne instead of Saka here. Wow. Um, Saka's got amazing numbers though. He's Eleven assists, thirteen goals carried Arsenal on his shoulders. We're well, not we'll going to Saka just yet, right? So you put De Bruyne in there. Yeah, and then and then you've just got the, the amazing situation where you've got Hall yeah. and Kane. De Bruyne in the half space and Trippier out wide, just feeding those two. Um. De Bruyne in the half space, turtle power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. 16 assists for De Bruyne this season, yeah. seven goals. I think it, we didn't maybe see him have his best possible season, but then comes in later on and starts to turn on the magic, I guess. Do you think that De Bruyne has been more impressive in the Champions League, perhaps, than he has in the Premier League? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I remember Guardiola saying he can just play better or something. Maybe there's just some of that. He's been just playing at such a high level for so long that you kind of seem to forget. Like Salah's not really in the team. He's in the subs bench. Yeah. You know? Only really because I was watching the Carragher and Neville Monday Night Football. And they both had Salah, and I was like, oh, of course, right. Salah he scored. He scored a heap of goals as well. Nineteen goals and eleven assists. You don't even think of that. Yeah. Joe Allison learned just recently is that Liverpool's um, goals against is the same as Arsenal's. And you think of Liverpool being like a disaster defensively this season but it's the same. Yeah. Anyway, so that's your kind of midfield there. Because then I also have Odegaard on the bench. You've got him on the actual team. I wanted to have him in, but I'd realised I can't have him and Saka and Saliba. Yeah. And I think Saliba would maybe more important defensively to Arsenal because that's how you win leagues. And that's why I justified it. I went for De Bruyne, uh, Odegaard over De Bruyne. I think that Odegaard's been more influential this season. De Bruyne is obviously a fantastic player, um, but I, I guess I kind of figured Odegaard, very different sort of profile of player in terms of I think he gets he gets around the box and he does a, a little bit more of this in, incisive passing whereas as we said with De Bruyne he just has the ability to put the ball on a sixpence from from pretty much anywhere either side and I've also got Trippier in the team as well so I guess what this team would end up doing is is, is with Trippier down uh, and, and the rest of the back four t switching across to a three um, and then I've got Erdogan here as well to be able to do uh, some of the other stuff. So I am getting the, the service from Trippier. Um, like I guess I've got it's not a real team. I mean, like. <laughs> no, but it has to be a real team, right? It has to be a real team. Trippier's numbers are amazing as well. He's got seven assists, I know that, and he scored a goal. So. It's shot creating actions is what I've got, yeah. So um, per 90, Kieran Trippier is the fifth most shot creating actioner <laughs> per 90 in the Premier League. A lot of it's from dead balls, so a lot of it is free kicks and things like that. And Newcastle were great at that this season. Uh, but hugely important, like one of the most creative players in the league is, is a right back. It's kind of like what Alexander Arnold was before, right? Mm. De Bruyne is the most shot creating actually of everyone in the league. So we probably should have had him in. Do you know who we don't have either of us who maybe should be in? Bruno Fernandes. Mm. His numbers are really high, but I don't. He's sort of a creative fulcrum for Manchester United, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I don't so. feel like he's in there. Oddly, we, this is on FB Ref, by the way. And if you go down to like below him, is Riyad Mahrez is the third, then James Madison. Who's had, oh, James Madison had a weirdly good season, even though I don't feel like he has at all because he might have been relegated by the time this comes out. Mm. Madison has 10 goals and 9 assists playing for Leicester, who have been awful all season. Didn't even start the last game that I saw before. This is obviously coming out again after the last game of the season. So. Speaking of Bruno Fernandes, there's an element to which there's maybe recency bias in what we're doing here, but you no, have included Fernandes. Rashford, right? Um, and, and Rashford had that real strong run, um, I, I guess, through the first half and the middle part of the season. As yeah, well. I, well, I think Rashford was so good for that little while. People were calling him the best player in the world. He was never that, but like, like he was amazing for that good few games. It helped that he was finishing every game. Like yeah. he had a goal pretty much every game for for a run, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I'll try and justify this. So, like, Rodri obviously will explain why that's in. Rice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just going to put him in anyway because people always say he's good. Casado. Uh, people always talk about him being good. He is very good, but I don't know. I often I actually thought about maybe putting him in right back if I played a back four because he does that for. Brighton, then he can come inside. I wouldn't have Rice, so I could have this. That was another thing I thought about doing. 
Yeah. Now we can justify it, and it's still not Garth Crooksy, you know? <laughs> but, uh, okay, so I'll stick with this now. Um, and then in my midfield, so you've got Gimarayas, I got him as well. He's absolutely brilliant. Can play as a six or the eight, but is... Newcastle are a different team when he's there. Just controls everything. Uh, helps me able to play through lines and control the match. But then what I've done is you'll notice I've put Harry Kane in midfield because he always drops deep as the uh, the deep passing man. His passing's amazing. And then when you get forward, because obviously you're going to have five forwards anyway, well, who better to have than around there than Kane and Holland? Isn't that great? It is great, yeah. I think that's... I mean... <laughs> Surprised teams haven't thought of having both Holland and Kane in the same yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's yeah. that's what they're that's why they're getting maybe relegated. Next season, maybe maybe yeah. maybe well, Leicester done that. United. Yeah. And next season we'll talk about how Pep Guardiola solved the problem of Kane and Holland in the same team. That'll be a great video when we do that one. Yeah, <laughs> John Stones playing seven positions in defence. Maybe John Stones could play up front. <laughs> uh, anyway, so obviously Holland goes in. Uh, we have spelled his name correctly there, haven't we? Yes, we have. Uh, and Harry Kane again. I didn't really realise like, how astonishing incredible they were. numbers. Twenty-eight this goals, three assists. Playing for Spurs. He's playing against Leeds this weekend, so he could end the, the season with 30 goals. He just played for Leeds. He just against played Leeds. for Leeds. He just he's played against Leeds and he may have scored two goals against them. Yeah. If they haven't. And if he has, that goes in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So this is our team this season. Uh, is, how many of yours are based on things you've seen? How many of them are based on the, uh, the statistics that you've looked at? I think I've gone with um, largely players who I think have influenced the the, the course of their team's season. Yeah. Um, so I, I, we've not talked about Mitama yet. Actually, oh, of course. Um, for Brighton, he's my other sided um, uh, wide player. So I've got Saka and Mitama on on either side, and I included Mitama because I feel as though he's again he's one of these players who's just burst onto the the scene and had a real influence on the way that Brighton have played this season. Um, he's like a real. Uh, indicator, I think, of the way that Roberto De Zerbi wants to play football. It's all about creating space for players like him to to really shine. And so I think he, uh, I've, I've included him because just as a, again as, as a testament to the season that Brighton have had. I guess the same with with Saka and Erdogan as well. I think that they those two, are, particularly Saka in the first half of the season, but Erdogan all the way through, actually a really important fulcrum for them. Um, and again, I, I don't know Erdogan's numbers, but he's picked. He's I think he's got something like 15 goals from from central midfield, which is nuts. Um, it's, 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 there's not a huge amount of players who will score that many yeah, goals Yeah, you're right, 15, from... yeah, which is the same as Gabriel Martinelli, who we don't, don't even have on the bench, who probably should be around there. Uh, other ones that could maybe have made it in, Callum Wilson had a great season. Um, even Tony, obviously now he's not going to play for a long while, but it was brilliant the season for Brentford. Ollie Watkins and other that can Yeah, I've got out. Watkins on my bench actually because oh, I really? think again he's a sort of he's one of these players who I think represents that the turn that Aston Villa have had bringing in Unai Emery, um, and Unai Emery has got so much out of Watkins by actually getting him into the places where he's he's a super productive player. Um, and yeah, it's been really really enjoyable watching. Um, but when I mean, we talked about we've talked about Brighton, we've talked about Brentford, but Aston Villa as well. It's really nice seeing them push push up towards the the European places. And next season they'll they'll be really fun to watch. The second next year, I think. I think yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh, and obviously, I I know I spelled Paulinho wrong. This is not a man <laughs> called Paul with Portuguese spelling. I spelt it wrong. I forgot to change it before we started filming. It's too late now. It's Paulinho at Fulham. He has made 145 tackles this season, which doesn't mean much on its own. It's 45 more tackles than the person in second place, which is Moises Casado with 100. So 145 to 100. And then everyone starts going down. Kind of a normal number. Like Bruno Gimaraes is 75. Plays a similar sort of position. And that's, what, 75 times 2? 150. Yeah. So he's almost double the amount of tackles. But does that mean you're good if you make all the tackles? Yeah, well, as Paolo Maldini once said, yes. if you do something, then you've done something else wrong. That's exactly it. Yeah. Interceptions, and to help me justify my Declan Rice one, was that he's made more interceptions than any other player in the league this season. 43, no, 62, I should say, sorry. Um, so that's what he's done very well. Uh, mine were mostly done from the eye. I put in, Saliba was a thing because of the way it changed the season. I would have had Stones mm. for a similar reason if I could have done. Wish I'd had De Bruyne in there somewhere, but I wouldn't put him on the bench even because it seems too obvious. Holland's got to go in. Yeah. And Kane, I didn't realise. We haven't even talked about Holland. I know. I feel as like we talked, we, we've mentioned all the stats for everyone else, but we've been talking about Holland's goal haul all season, right? And it is, it is just. His what now? Mind blowing. His gold, goal haul. <laughs> His haul of goals. <laughs> as in H A U L, not H A L L. That's, that's the hall where he keeps all his goals. Who would your manager of the year be 
um, oh, applying right, the same rules is. to what we've got. So if you've got two of them, you can't have the manager from that team. <laughs> that doesn't leave anyone. Well, Does you it, can't have I Man can't City. Have, you can't oh, have Man United. You can't, can't have, have Brighton. You can't have Newcastle. Okay. Well, I guess. Or Jurgen Klopp. I'm not going to go for Jurgen Klopp as my coach of the year, no. despite this innovative use of Trent Alexander-Arnold, who we, again is a player we haven't we haven't used. But I think he. I mean, I don't think he's had a great season, but mm. he would be. You know, get him into my team and have Trippier, De Bruyne, and Trent Alexander-Arnold all floating the ball into Kane, 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 and Haaland in the goal hall. The goal hall. The yeah. hall of goals. Um, you've not left me really. Oh, I, can, I can't say De Zerbi. Like who's left? <laughs> well, I'll tell you mine because I prepared this. Gary O'Neill mm. of Bournemouth. They should have gone down because they've not got a good team. I think Philip Billing's a good player. Uh, Dominic Solanke's all right. There's some players that are in there that are okay, but basically, uh, from having taken them over as a team that Scott Parker said they were basically completely shit and they weren't going to be able to do anything, and then to turn them into a team which finished well above relegation, that's why he is my manager of the season. Who would your actual manager of the season be if you could pick anyone? Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I think I'd, I mean, it, it's hard to look beyond Pep, like you say, because if they do win the treble, then this will go down in history as, as like one of the teams. People will say Pep's 22-23 team. Um, Roberto De Zerbi, I think, has has been really, really impressive uh, in that Yeah, he, he'd be in for it, yeah. Eddie Howe. Yeah, Eddie, yeah. Eddie Howe. They spent money, but turning that team into what it's done is pretty amazing. Yeah, and doing it in a very different way to the way that a lot of other coaches have made teams elite, right? Um, doing the doing the uh, more of a Jurgen Klopp trajectory, like early Jurgen Klopp. I think that's that's impressive as well. Reminding people that actually, if you have good out of possession play, you can perform really well in these top leagues as well. Um, obviously, it helps when you've got really elite players in possession of the ball as well but yeah really interesting different way of playing and I think the the Premier League is better for having a team playing like Newcastle in it and so there you go that is our teams of the season and our managers of the season uh, obviously the real team of the season the manager is Man City because they won the league so that, I mean that's just really what that should be everyone's team of the season should be that and so tell us what your team of the season should be and where we're wrong because that helps drive engagement in the comments, <laughs> which helps the video. And also, I'd be interested to see what we've got wrong, because maybe we've missed a few, and then we can do videos on them. That'd be great. Please do that, and uh, have a lovely time. Goodbye! Let's keep moving. <laughs> if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big